It all begins with a star. It's not a big or important star, just a tiny point of light in the vastness of the Milky Way. But it is unique in one respect. It supplies all the energy needed to sustain life on Earth. Since the beginning of time, the sun has been the most mysterious body in the heavens, worshipped by cultures around the world. Even the earliest astronomers could discern spots and marks on this perfect sphere. When the sun is covered by the moon and with the right equipment, you can see giant fingers of flame leaping out into space. And those magnificent arcs of fire release three things that we can track. Light, traveling at the speed of, well, light, arrives at Earth in eight minutes. Highly energetic particles that take a few hours to reach Earth. And the solar wind, traveling at over one million miles per hour, that takes two to three days to arrive. As the solar wind approaches Earth, it compresses the magnetic field that surrounds us, causing our protective cocoon to flatten and distort. The charged particles it carries create amazing patterns of light and motion, known as the aurora, that can be seen best in the polar regions as the electrical charge flows into the upper atmosphere. Who would guess that these colorful designs are a sign of potential trouble? Our activity in space is spread out over a very large volume from the relatively low uh, orbit of the space station and space shuttle, which is a couple hundred kilometers of altitude, to other satellites that we have for weather monitoring and communication that are tens of thousands of miles from the Earth. And one of the important uh, challenges that we have is to take the few measurements that we have of the space environment and make that information useful over the full volume of space where our commercial and human activity is occurring. Our commercial investment in space and our use of the space environment is increasing dramatically and there are billions of dollars anticipated of additional satellites that will be launched soon. Only recently has mankind created the tools that enable us to really look at our star. What can we see looking at the sun? Is there more than meets the eye? And what information do we really need to gather from the sun? I think it's clear that we really need to try and optimize the resources that we have available. We have our physical understanding that we hope is captured in the physical models, and then we have our observations, and we need to somehow try and combine the two. Now, they've been doing it for many years in weather forecasting and developing data assimilation techniques. We really need to try and do the same in, for space weather. That's one of the challenges for the future. Looked at through the wide variety of filters available to us now, the sun resembles an onion with layer upon layer of information. The many faces of the sun present a picture, like a map of the sun's terrain, drawn with heat and magnetic energy. And like the Earth, the sun has seasons. The solar cycle is a period when the sun goes from a minimum to a maximum and back to a minimum. It's really kind of a rhythm. During minimum, the sun is almost blank. It looks like a big Nerf ball. But then, at maximum, we see flares, we see coronal mass ejections. Um, it's really spectacular. It's when we get in the way of some of those eruptions from the sun that we feel the effects as well as see them. Each 10 to 11 years, the sun passes through one complete seasonal cycle. In the maximum phase, the sun's activity has profound implications for the Earth. As our society has grown more dependent on technology, and as that technology has grown more sophisticated, we have placed our vital communication systems in jeopardy. Information transmitted by satellites that circle the globe keep our businesses, governments, and relationships humming. One giant solar event can literally melt the components that supply electric power to our cities, interrupting critical navigation information or sending an incorrect signal to a ship at sea. Sending out warnings of these turbulent conditions is the job of space weather operations at NOAA's Space Environment Center in Boulder, Colorado. When an alert is sounded, the forecast team springs into action. Craig, it looks like we reached the end flight level on x-rays. All right, thank you. Has they been producing anything uh, up to this point? We've had a couple minor M-class out of it so far as it's come around the east level. Great. 
Was there any filaments that, that, that disappeared around this area that you know of? There was about a five degree filament. Okay, great. That uh, x-ray looks like it's going to spike them straight up, so it wouldn't surprise me if we didn't get an X out of this pretty soon. Uh, Essie, go ahead and uh, issue the type two alert. Okay. Hi, this is Space Weather Operations in Boulder, Colorado. I'm just calling to let you know that we issued an, with an M5 X-ray alert. It is a rapid alert and may have your initials. Great, thanks. I noticed that there's a big flare going on. Do you know where it's coming from? Uh, region 8674. Okay, we thought that one was getting complicated. Yeah, so. looks like you're still going up. Okay, very good. Thanks. Great. Space Weather Operations, this is Essie speaking. Hi, this is Mike with the uh, JFK Control Tower. Hi, this is Larry Smith at the New York Power Pool. This is the San Francisco Police Department. Hi, this is Jim Lang with the Associated Press. I'm a GPS user. I seem to be getting anomalous readings on my GPS system. Uh, as a matter of fact, yes, we've had some activity over the past 24 hours that uh, probably would be inter interfering with the GPS. Uh, I would anticipate this to probably continue uh, as well for probably another, uh, oh, maybe 10, 12 hours. Space Environment Center is one of 10 regional warning centers around the world. However, it is the one world warning agency to describe and predict conditions in the space environment. Those conditions, particularly the rare severe storms, can affect systems that society depends upon to do its business. Space environment can do its work because we have partners. We have domestic partners, NASA, the U.S. Air Force, National Science Foundation, and we have international partners, the regional warning centers around the world. Day and night, the Space Environment Center is always watching, always on the alert to protect our assets, our systems, and our vital communications.